What is going on, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by Galadon Gaming. Yes, it is the filthiest deck ever in Clash Royale. I'm almost embarrassed to make this episode. I don't know what my clan members were thinking, and I apologize right off the bat for what you were about to watch. If there's young children in the room, please have them leave now. Uh, it might be too late. There's the expo sticking out, protruding from DFAC's deck right there, and yes, it gets filthier. Okay, this is bad. It starts off bad. It gets worse. It gets ugly. It gets so... All right, let's just get into the replays. So we've got DFAC from Full Attack, and uh, HC is his opponent. Now, I honestly did not ask these guys to do this. For some reason, one of the players thought, I'm going to try the Expo, and then somebody else said, well, if you're going to use the Expo, you might as well use the Mortar too. And let's throw in the Royal Giant because, well, a lot of people hate the Royal Giant right now. So, Expo, Mortar, Royal Giant deck. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, accidentally, these guys are like, wait a minute, this is actually working. The Mortar works to help defend the Expo. And the Royal Giant gets in front and it's this great synergistic combination where these guys are winning all these battles. And they actually are winning some battles, embarrassingly enough, with this deck. So, here comes the Royal Giant. Check out the Mortar as it fires on the Barbarians. So it is helping out, and look at that. The Royal Giant, the Barbarians are gone with just one Mortar shot and the Fireball. Royal Giant takes the tower down, and somehow DFAC goes up 1-0 with this deck that nobody thought would be effective. I mean, really. So he's facing, obviously, kind of an unusual deck. He's got Hog and Miner in there, which also seems like it could be a good idea, but... I'm, I'm still I'm embarrassed for these guys, but remember, we're not a clan of Mortar users and Expo users. Well, maybe they are becoming that way, but in any case, I have to go back to saying that Mortars and Expos are not skill-less. You don't have zero skill if you use them. Uh, it, it's not easy to win. It's not an auto-win, obviously, with the buffs, with the slow deployment times, with a limited amount of damage that they do. Uh, there is a trick to getting these to work, and somehow these guys have gotten it to work, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. So DFAC, we're going into the final minute, double elixir, Hog Rider, good counter to the Expo, and the Expo is damaged pretty severely, pretty early, it does go down. You'll notice he's got a Knight in there to protect it as well, but as soon as the Expo goes down, a Mortar replaces it. Now big push on the right hand side, but the Mortar, okay, the Mortar didn't really matter there. The Fireball wiped out the Minion Horde, and the P.E.K.K.A., the Mini P.E.K.K.A. was gone as well. So. DFAC, if you really look at things here, the Mortar and the Expo didn't do a great deal. The right tower went down because of a Royal Giant. One single Mortar Shell uh, did not make the difference between a win and a loss. So really, I feel like this battle right here we're watching was DFAC winning despite... Okay, now I say that as the Mortar takes down the left tower, but but again, not not because of these cards, maybe almost despite these cards, but... Somehow he wins. Uh, he wins. He ends up with a two crown win, 2 0 against a player. And uh, so, all right, so here it is. The virus spreads through full attack. Next up, we've got Swift from full attack also using this deck. And I, I don't know. Okay, so he leads off innocently enough. It looks like a normal deck from now. It doesn't look normal. Now you see the expo or the mortar on deck, as I call it, getting ready to end up in the hand. It's like in the on deck circle in a baseball game. But the Royal Giant, obviously doing the work right there, gets the tower down with the minions as well. So he didn't need the Mortar or the Expo once again. I feel like these guys are almost winning despite these cards. And it's a little less embarrassing to watch them use these cards on defense. Because they are pretty solid defensive cards when you think about it. Maybe the Bomb Tower is better, especially with that upcoming buff to the Bomb Tower. But in any case, you've got the Mortar firing defensively on all sorts of units. Now this Prince does get to the tower, get some damage done, but Swift is already way ahead. And uh, I feel bad for anybody on the other side watching these units get deployed when you see a Mortar and then an Expo. And it's going to get worse later on, you guys. So let's check it out as we get down to the last minute 45 or so. Swift has the 1-0 lead. So again, he took it early because of the Royal Giant, not because of the Expo and the Mortar. And I don't think he's dropped the Expo yet. So really, this is a Royal Giant centric deck and the expo and the mortar are really supporting them and so far we've only uh oh here comes the expo all right so now it looks like he's going to nope mortar no nope, expo mortar okay so the mortar like we saw in the first battle supporting the royal giant and then the expo 
Triple Trouble. This is awful to see. I'm sorry. Expo, Mortar, and a Royal Giant all up at the same time. It doesn't get much worse than this. Now, obviously, he doesn't get a lot of damage done, but I feel like at this point, he's more just goofing off because he's so far ahead. He's got the right tower down. He's down to a minute left, and somehow he stopped that P.E.K.K.A. from getting to the tower. Another Prince on the right-hand side, and it looks like Swift might lose this tower. Yes, he does, so it's tied up. And now suddenly Swift, maybe not so happy about his Mortar Expo choice, but I'm imagining he's going to go back to the bread and butter, the Royal Giant. So the Fireball, probably good value there. It hit two Elixir Collectors, and that's important. Don't want to let your opponent get too far ahead. And here it comes, another Royal Giant. This time in support, it's the Expo, but the Expo gets sneak attacked by that mini P.E.K.K.A., but does manage to survive for a few seconds anyway. Again, not really a help. If you look at the way things are unfolding here, the Expo has not done really much of a thing to help out. The Mortar, I feel like, can help out on defense, but I don't know. I still feel like, ideally, they would change the Mortar to be a defensive card, shorten its range even more, and increase its power. Give it a lot more power. If it's got that small dead zone in front of it, it's still going to be cool and an interesting card to use uh, because you can't fire on a unit right in front of you. You can only fire on units further away, so you could be de deploying it behind a tower to cross lane defend. In any case, it's over and somehow swift, but again, Royal Giant wins the day. It was not the, mount the Mortar or the Expo. It was the Royal Giant that got the victory, but get ready, you guys. DFAC has taken the dirtiest deck ever next level. This is some next level thinking right here. This is like out, outside the box, innovative, uh, electric imagination. Okay, I'll just let you see. It's a mirror. All right, so now if there were nothing dirtier than an Expo Mortar Royal Giant deck, it's got to be a deck where you've got the mirror as well. So the potential to deploy back-to-back -back mortars, back-to-back -back Expos, and sure enough, DFAC is going to subject a uh, point karate to this uh, insult. So let's just watch as the battle unfolds. Good fireball working on those barbarians. The tower should be able to finish them off. Another prince. So we're again seeing more princes around levels 10, level 11. But the royal giant manages to distract the prince, turn him around. And now the prince harmlessly is going to fall to the knight. And again, the royal giant on the tower. So really, I think these guys are winning despite the Expo and the Mortar and not because of the Expo and the Mortar. That was all Royal Giant right there, down to under 500 hit points, and the Mortar really was trying to back up the Royal Giant. I love how it takes out the Princess, though. One shots the Princess, how does she feel? She sees that giant cannonball closing in on her face. That cannot be a good way to go. So another Alexa Collector goes down, and DFAC has the defensive Mortar working but wait, he's not done. There it goes. There is the Expo on the left-hand side, and it gets done. It finishes its deployment in time. The Mortar tries to help out the Expo, but yes, the uh, Dark Prince and the Barbarians are going to annihilate that Expo. Well, there's another one. So there it was. You saw it, the mirrored Expo deployment, left lane, right lane, for a moment there, just for a couple of seconds. Get your screenshots. Mom, get the camera. Two Expos at the same time in two different lanes. So again, DFAC trying to get to that right tower. This time, he is trying to get there with the Expo, but it keeps on locking onto other units, and there it finally goes. And sure enough, in this battle, for the first time, we see an Expo take a tower down. So out of all three battles, really we saw Royal Giant being the hero of the day. This time, the Expo gets in there. Now check out the Mortar tried to deploy it to help out the Royal Giant. Didn't work out. Mortar is going to fall. Royal Giant is going to focus on the King's Tower. An Elixir Collector, really not sure what the thought was right there for dropping the Elixir Collector when the Royal Giant had already locked onto the tower. Especially when you're in the last 30 seconds, you're not going to get the full value back of a late deployed Elixir Collector. But this one is almost over anyway. There is the Defensive Expo from DFAC and the Mortar Royal Giant combination on the right hand side. This is a troll if I've ever seen it. But it looks like he's going to need it. He loses the left tower during the last five seconds of this battle, and indeed the Royal Giant and the Mortar are going to work on the King's Tower. We are into overtime, and now Defex, Defac is losing a lot of hit points on that King's Tower, but his Royal Giant is just about to finish the job. Oh, 60 hit points left, and that is it. One quick spell. This battle is over, and the dirtiest deck, next level dirty deck, 
wins the battle. Are you guys going to try this? Is this your thing? I hope not. I really hope not. So there you have it, you guys. Is there a dirtier card combination in all of Clash Royale? If you think there is, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys, as always, for sticking around all the way to the end of this very painful episode. Subscribe for Daily Clash content. Thumbs up if you liked the video, and I hope to see you all back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Minus the elbow. And the Royal And the Royal Dragon. Galligon, that's some dirty pull there, mate. For that full of tick, full of dirty players. <laughs>